Good afternoon and welcome to today's Ad Week webinar, How SMBs and Agencies Make an Impact with Connected TV. Today's webinar is sponsored by Mountain. I'm Danielle Moore, here with Ad Week's content studio, and I'll be your host today. Before we begin, I want to take a minute to make sure everyone knows what to expect from today's webinar and is familiar with the features of our platform here. The actual presentation should go somewhere in the 30 to 35 minute range, after which we will have time for audience Q&A. So if at any point you have a question for one of our speakers, just use that Q&A tool beneath the video window on your screen, and we'll get to as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. Also, it's not too late to invite your colleagues to join us today. About 15 minutes ago, you received a final reminder email from us. In there, you can find a link to the webinar registration page that you can share with your colleagues. There's still plenty of time for them to join us live today, but if they can't, they can always catch the on-demand recording of the webinar, which will be available to all registrants later today. Um, we'll send you a link to that when it's live around 3.30 Eastern or so. And if you would like a PDF of today's slide deck, you can find that in the event resources area beneath the video window on your screen. As always, if you enjoy today's webinar, definitely check out the full Adweek webinars calendar at adweek.com slash webinars. You can see what we have coming up and also get access to our archive of on-demand events as well. Now, let me introduce you to today's speakers. We're happy to be joined by Matt Collins, Director of Product Marketing at Mountain. Matt has more than 15 years of B2B marketing leadership experience, the last eight of which he has spent in ad tech. Before joining Mountain, he spent time with Roku, Simul Media, and Ampush. We're also pleased to welcome Sharon Lee Tony, the CEO of SLT Consulting. Sharon founded digital marketing agency SLT Consulting, acquired by Fiverr in 2020. She partners with organizations to drive brand and marketing strategy development, marketing oversight, execution, and more. And finally, we're pleased to welcome Johannes Sauer, CEO and founder at Yasa Studios. Johannes founded adjustable furniture company Yasa, which specializes in making traditionally static furniture move in 2016. Before co-founding Yasa, he was business development director for Logic Data. We've got a lot of great content to dive into today, so let me bring Matt up on screen here to get us started. Welcome, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Danielle, and thank you to Sharon, and thank you to Johannes, and thank you to everybody who's taken a minute here to join us, regardless of when you are joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, I want to start with uh, a remembrance. Uh, when I first got into ad tech on the TV side, this is several years ago, I was having a conversation with a colleague of mine who, just in an offhand way, observed that a major broadcast TV network, whose name I will not share, at the time had a we did business with around 190 different advertisers. And I remember feeling at the at one hand thinking like, well, that makes sense. I mean, advertise, TV advertising in particular has long been the domain of the biggest and of the big advertisers, the bluest of the blue chip uh, advertisers and agencies, uh, and was also largely run by a relatively small group of, of networks. Um, but I also thought, well, man, that seems like a crazy small amount, a uh, small number of advertisers who can benefit from the sight, sound, and motion of TV. You fast forward to where we are today, and over the last several years, the onset of connected TV has changed everything for everybody that I just mentioned. Uh, first of all, there are many, many more publishers who are uh, in the game, and it's now possible for advertisers who are not necessarily the biggest of the big to be able to participate in connected TV in a meaningful way. Here I'm talking about the small and mid-size uh, businesses and their small and mid-size agencies who support them. Now we're able to get on this medium and be able to use it to launch affordable test budgets uh, and get meaningful signal back. So if you are a small and medium-sized business or agency, you are in exactly the right place to hear from uh, some people who have been in this, maybe are where you are now at one point, and who are going to be sharing their own experience about using Connected TV to achieve their objectives. So today we are going to go through and uh, really cover some, uh, starting with the basics of understanding the core 101 level of Connected TV. And then we're going to talk about how it is made to support uh, both agencies and their clients and specifically those like perhaps many in our audience who might be a bit smaller, who may not have been on TV or connected TV before. And so we'll talk about 
uh, how the medium has changed this dynamic and has really opened up access. And, and I'm so excited to hear from Johannes and from Sharon, who will share their experience. And we'll also cover uh, a, a secondary benefit, but a really important benefit of how connected TV impacts the performance of other digital channels. So I'm really excited to, to have this conversation uh, with everybody here today. We'll begin with some 101 uh, level uh, conversation around connected TV. My guess is by now everybody in the audience has seen or uh, uh, had come across an ad running on connected TV as opposed to traditional linear TV. And while the ads may look the same in many instances, the, the way in which that ad was served to you is very different. In traditional linear television, uh, the, the, that, uh, and, and that's delivered here in over the air or cable or by satellite, it is uh, a mass reach vehicle. It is also uh, does not have the benefit of a digital backbone, which means that it has chronically suffered from two shortcomings that I think marketers wish they could overcome uh, despite all of TV's power. And, and those two shortcomings are, number one, the ability to reach and uh, target a precisely defined audience. And number two, to be able to measure uh, confidently what's happening down funnel. And by down funnel, I mean what's happening with customer acquisition, what's happening with revenue growth. Uh, and so as a result, the, that medium of traditional linear tel television has been used by advertisers who are content to achieve mass reach, including reaching customers that might be outside of their, their target audience and uh, has been measured more for its impact on top of funnel. So here I'm thinking of things like brand awareness, which are uh, perhaps a little bit harder to measure in, in a really convincing way across the entire universe of customers who are exposed to an ad campaign. The good news is, is that connected TV has so changed that dynamic. And, uh, and really it starts with its backbone. Uh, unlike traditional linear television, Connected TV can be powered by a, a digital plumbing and wiring system that's very similar to the digital marketing that we consume across our other devices, our, our phones and our tablets and our computers. The result is that advertisers who participate in Connected TV enjoy a level of precision and speed and flexibility, the ability to get on or off the air really, really quickly. It also means that they it solves for those two shortcomings that I described that have long been persistent with traditional linear television. It, it means that they can define and reach and convert a very specifically defined target audience segment, uh, which matters if nothing else, because it cuts down on the amount of what advertisers refer to as spill or wasted impressions that reach an audience that's outside of the sweet spot. It also solves for the measurement shortcoming with performance TV, which I'll get to in here in a moment, a connected TV flavor that Mountain is particularly good at, uh, you can now measure the impact that your campaigns have on down funnel performance. The kinds of things that I like to say, you can proudly walk into the office of the CFO and explain. So here we're referring to revenue growth, uh, increased customers, uh, return on ad spend. Uh, all of that is now powerful with connected TV while at the same time maintaining all of the great brand and storytelling benefits that we associate with traditional linear television. A bit about Mountain. Mountain is a self-service ad platform for built for connected TV that has transformed that medium into the third scalable performance channel alongside paid search and social. And we have democratized access to that channel by en enabling it so that uh, even small but mighty advertisers in their agencies can get on the platform launch a very affordable test budget and be able to get meaningful signal back about the impact their campaign is having on website visits, uh, customer acquisition, revenue growth, return on ad spend. Uh, and we love working with uh, customers like uh, Johannes and like Sharon and, and their businesses who are showing that television is not just for the biggest of the big brands, uh, lots of different advertisers can participate and benefit from this too. And it makes sense why they're getting in the game. Uh, the, the medium has exploded in its growth. In just the last four years, we've seen 
the number of people watching has gone up from around 196 million to nearly 228 million people. In another year or so, the number of people watching connected TV will surpass the number of people who are watching traditional linear television, which I think is a major milestone in the growth of the medium. Not only are more people watching, but when they do watch, they're watching for longer. The amount of time on average that they spend per day has uh, almost doubled to nearly two hours a day of watching a traditional linear television. And not surprisingly, advertisers have noticed and they are following their customers into this medium with ad spend having increased from nearly 7 billion just four years ago to over 25 billion uh, as forecast for this year. So uh, it's no surprise, therefore, that this medium has caught the attention of lots of different advertisers and brands. And so at this point, I want to invite Sharon to come in and talk a little bit about the experience that she has had with her business, uh, describing her business and, and what makes it special, but also uh, what, what brought her to Connect to TV. So Sharon, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Matt, and it's a pleasure to be here with everybody today. Um, I'm Sharon Tony, and I'm the founder of SLT Consulting. We are a digital marketing boutique agency um, coming with a lot of different experience from many, many, many different industries. So myself, I've been working in advertising for over 20-something years, working at really big agencies like Saatchi and & Saatchi and & McCann Erickson, working in-house at clients like Unilever, and so I come to digital marketing with a lot of traditional advertising experience. And when I had created this agency, what I really wanted to do was I wanted to bring in that big brand thinking to smaller and medium sized businesses, because that's kind of my own personal passion. I think, you know, when we're working with smaller businesses, we see bigger impact. Um, and so we've always positioned ourselves being a boutique agency, either working with larger clients on very specific projects, or many times it's working with smaller and mid-sized clients, kind of soup to nuts from a very 360 perspective. And how we came to Connected TV was that we started to notice that more and more clients were coming to us for performance marketing. And although we were getting some pretty good results with Meta and Google and all of the things that many of us have been doing for the last couple of years, there was a need and a desire to build even more brand awareness. And um, in a really crowded marketplace with other platforms like that, it wasn't so easy, especially with smaller brands and smaller budgets to do that same thing. And so we're constantly looking for new ways of communicating. We're constantly looking for new ways of reaching customers. Um, and we had experimented with Connected TV kind of in the earlier stages, even just a few years ago with some other clients. And we just thought, you know, if there could be a self-service platform that could do this, then it would be perfect for an agency like ours, where so many of my team members are literally in the platforms day in and day out, very, very hands-on. I'm sure a lot of you guys on this call might be those same people. Um, measuring attribution, right? Really looking at metrics, really looking at how every single dollar is contributing to the impact, but also for our clients that aren't coming to us with multi-gazillion dollar budgets many times to still make a really big impact that we could then track from that first touch point all the way to the conversion. Um, and so when we when we discovered Mountain and we, uh, we did some initial kind of smaller testing with them and really found the amount of impact that we could get from that, we were like, we're sold. Like this is, this is the thing that is gonna help us to stand out as a service provider, but this is also the type of channel and platform that's gonna help our clients to stand out in a crowded marketplace where folks can see their message for the first time, probably in their living room screens, maybe on their mobile devices as they're streaming Bridgerton or their Kardashians or all the other things that I'm personally addicted to, and then follow them up with an ad later on, right, on their mobile device or um, to retarget them for something else, or even maybe a couple months later, cross sell them on something. And when um, and we just really, really loved the, the platform, the capability, but also the fact that we were learning so much along with the Mountain team. Um, and, and for us as a boutique agency, learning and staying at the forefront of innovation is a big part of what we do too. And so that's kind of how we came to deciding on CTV for the clients of ours that were looking for things like brand awareness in addition to conversion heavy types of campaigns. And now I'll turn this back to Matt, because I think it'll be helpful for you to talk everybody through some of the features of Mountain, um, just so that they know how awesome it is as well. 
Yeah, Sharon, thank you very much. And I will say that your outlook and your uh, approach to your your clients is something that uh, I love and I know a lot. You have a lot of other fans inside of Mountain um, because you have a perspective around the, you know, uh, an omni-channel approach. You're not just fixated on becoming a guru of a single channel. And I, I also love how you and your agency bring all of that bigger company experience and innovation and and service it to uh, smaller brands, emerging brands who are on their way to becoming that big, but need the benefit of that kind of innovative thinking. And so it's really exciting to hear and have learned more and more about the approach that you've taken to growing brands. And 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 so uh, we'll transition here to a little bit about some of the 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 capabilities within the platform that really make a difference. Um, you know, it starts with a, a sort of a mission and a mindset. Mountain loves all the brands that, w that, that work with us. We love all the agencies that are on the platform, and there are a lot I'll mention. I'll get to that here in a bit. Um, and, and, and it's in part because we know that these smaller brands, look, they have to perform. Oftentimes, next month's marketing budget is dependent on this month's performance, and Mountain really understands that. And, and so we've built a platform, first and foremost, that is focused on performance and on being able to deliver those measurable results back to the business. Uh, it means endowing it with that digital plumbing and wiring so that uh, advertisers and agencies who are using it can benefit from its speed, from its precision in audience, uh, in audience targeting. Uh, the flexibility to be able to get on the air super quickly if, oppor if the opportunity arises, but also the ability to get off the air quickly if the need arises. Um, all of those things are super, super important. Um, and to be able to uh, deliver some uh, confident measurement back to the rest of the organization to help explain, hey, look, uh, the company gave us this much of its resources in, in the form of an advertising budget. We'll look at the impact that it made and be able to do that with some confidence uh, so that advertisers know where they stand. Uh, and that's super, super important. So when we look at all, what that actually looks like, it kind of takes the shape of it a bit of a flywheel. So if we orient ourselves at noon on this on this graphic, uh, it starts with reach. Uh, Byron Sharp uh, talks about this unique audience reach and the ability to reach more customers is an absolutely necessary input to driving uh, brand growth, durable brand growth over time. And Mountain uh, enables agencies and brands to be able to reach uh, their customers in any number of different ways, whether it's using uh, uh, Third-party audiences, uh, we have over 80,000 uh, audience segments that, that, that agencies and brands are using. It, it can also mean first-party data or CRM data and, and using all of those to be able to precisely reach an audience and to experiment with audiences at no additional cost above and beyond what they're paying for media. I think as you heard from Sharon, there's also you know these smaller brands, boy, they care about outcomes. They care about driving a result. And that's how we've constructed the platform. It is very outcomes-based. It, it operates in ways that are strikingly similar to what you'd experience using paid search and social, uh, meaning that you can sign up for a particular, you set your goal, and that goal can be website visits, it can be revenue, it can be return on ad spend, and that's the way the platform will optimize. Uh, we have found, uh, in terms of the inventory that, that uh, ads run on. We have found that the pr more premium, the better. Mountain has direct deals with over 150 different uh, stream premium streaming publishers. So we help get our, uh, our agencies and, and their brands uh, uh, ads in front of uh, a, an audience that is expecting premium Hollywood produced content. And we know that that content converts awfully well. Uh, Mountain Multitouch, which is at approximately at the six o'clock mark on this flywheel, is a capability that allows advertisers to push more consumers deeper into the funnel by reaching them on other devices in the household. So uh, an advertiser can extend the creative messaging of their CTV campaign into what that consumer experiences on their phones or on their tablets or on their computers in the household. Uh, and surround them with the, uh, that same creative message, which we have seen time and again improves performance. In fact, advertisers who use that tend to see a 10x increase in their conversion rates. We know that measurement is super important uh, for establishing confidence in any medium, and Mountain has built a proprietary approach to measuring results on connected television. 
And uh, it's deduped across all channels. It has a name. It's called Verified Visits. And essentially what we do is uh, we, we own, the platform will only take credit for a website visit that's produced by your campaign within the campaign attribution window that you get to set and that have not come as a result of the UTM code that is ass assigned to any other channel. So if, for example, someone sees an ad on Mountain through a Mountain campaign that your, your agency or brand sets up, but then converts through a, a paid search ad or a, a, an ad on Meta, uh, Mountain, the Mountain platform won't take credit for it, even though the ad was seen at some point along the way. And we make this measurement easy for, to, to consume. You can, of course, see it in, in the platform. Uh, you can also get it through Google Analytics. We have an integration with Google Analytics, so you can see performance right alongside your other channels. Or if you prefer, you can uh, subscribe to an API that Mountain makes available and ingest all that great data into your own uh, visualization software, whether it be like Tableau or Domo. Um, and finally, you know, in, in closing out the flywheel, automation of the platform uh, enables for uh, changes to campaign execution that are simply too fast and too voluminous for people to be able to keep up with. Uh, it, uh, it optimizes thousands and thousands and thousands of times a day based on the various signals that it gets. In fact, it considers over 50, 52 different attributes in deciding the best uh, way to uh, reach a household that's most likely to convert for your business. Um, and if for agencies, this is great because it allows agencies, this automation allows agencies to do what I think agencies have done best forever and ever, which is focus on strategy, focus on creative, and focus on building stronger relationships. So now I want to bring both Sharon and Johannes into this conversation to talk very specifically about uh, Yasa Studios and what Johannes was uh, seeking to accomplish with Connected TV and the way that Sharon supported them. Uh, so Sharon and Johannes, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Matt. Um, Hi, everyone. So, hello, everyone, again. Johannes and I met, um, and for those of you who work agency side, you'll appreciate this. Um, when we were pitching Yasa, one of Johannes's uh, major KPIs was wanting ROAS, right? And so, so many clients, come to us and they're like, we don't care about anything else. <laughs> Just give me that return on ad spend. And we are like, all right, got it. Um, but other aspects, and Johannes, I'll let you get into more of it, but other aspects were also um, that he was pretty flexible though. So it's not like he came and he said, I want ROAS and I want you to do it a specific way. He just said, that's my primary goal. Here are some other business objectives. And I trust you guys to figure out the right channel mix, the right strategy and how to get it done. Um, and to be transparent, kind of going back to what Matt was saying, we didn't just do CTV for Yasa. We were also running paid social. We were also running paid search. We had kind of dabbled in some other things as well as we kind of embarked upon this journey. And so it wasn't its own, it wasn't a solo channel type of campaign. But what we really loved about this as an option is that we could break out the attribution to be specific to what we got from Mountain, specific then from what we were getting from Meta, specific from what we were getting from Google, and that way knowing that they were all supporting each other as well. So I'll let Johannes tell you a little bit more about Yasa and how he was thinking about this as a business owner and also how we ended up partnering together on this. Yeah, thanks, Sharon. Uh, hi, everyone uh, that has just joined us. My name is Johannes Sauer. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Yasa in the United States. I've uh, been with the company since 2016, and we make uh, standing desks. I'm standing in front of one. Uh, and in the United States, we had a particular portfolio around bedding, soft goods like blankets. And for, for Connected TV and this particular campaign, we were uh, trying to push our weighted blanket product. Um, so this was a Q4 effort, and we had done everything that Sharon has just described. Uh, you know, your bread and butter advertising techniques in paid search and paid social. And we launched our mountain campaign, I want to say right after, or actually we came up with the idea right after Black Friday. Performance was okay, but our CPMs and CPCs were skyrocketing. And we, together with SLTC, were brainstorming, okay, what, what are we going to do next? 
um, how can we, and in particular for weighted blankets, that's a, it's a holiday gift. And so prime time was coming up, first week of December, second week of December, right up until the cutoff time with shipping. That is prime season for, for that particular product. And, you know, obviously we could have spent more on paid social and paid search that, and that would have been the traditional go-to, but I was worried that we'd just be burning money with, you know, see declining ROAS. Um, so Sharon and her team were like, well, should we look into TV? And I'm like, this, this has got to be completely out of our budget range. We cannot afford that. And then we looked into mountains platform and I was surprised that with, you know, a mere budget of 10, 20, $30,000, we were able to be on TV. And I, to me, this was so appealing because as, as a small brand, you do want to create this brand awareness, but you, you want to do it on a budget that that's attainable to you. So it makes your brand more legit in my eye. And that's why we went with this and uh, launched a campaign within a week and a half. And we're right there in, uh, in the spot for primetime holiday shopping. Yeah, and it was pretty. Um, it was pretty incredible in terms of the speed at which we were able to get all this done, for sure. But also the fact that brand awareness was a big part of the pie. That I think going into some of these campaigns, because we were so focused on ROAS, we actually we deprioritized that, right? And so I mentioned that in the beginning because we were really approaching this as a very traditional performance marketing method of running these campaigns. And after Black Friday, realizing that the cost efficiency just really wasn't there anymore. And also having a client that was all about ROAS, all about ROAS, <laughs> it just became clear that we needed another, we needed another way to kind of do top of funnel, middle of the funnel marketing. We had to have it be pretty cost efficient. And we also had to reach targeted audiences. And that was the other thing, right? A lot of times when you're doing brand awareness campaigns, you do need to blanket a lot of audience, blanket literally a lot of audiences. And here we were, we were, pro we were promoting this weighted blanket, which was gorgeous. Where there's a picture of it right on your slides. And it was, it was one of those things where we had to stand out in a marketplace where we were building a brand around a product. Um, and that, and, and so all of those, it was almost like the perfect alignment of need, um, KPIs, the the flexibility of the platform, but also the speed at which we could literally set the campaigns live, see right away how they were performing. We thankfully did see success pretty early, but if we hadn't, we would have been able within a week to take down that creative, swap in some new ones, you know, figure out retargeting just as flexible as it would be on some of these other performance marketing channels. So um we really, we just, I, and you know, Johannes, I just want to thank you publicly too, because it's, it's not often that we have clients that really understand um, and empathize with the agency team. Like you were just so great at collaborating with us and just kind of being like, Hey guys, we're, you know, this thing that we just did was okay, but it didn't work great. So like, let's figure out a new solution. And we had kind of leaned on you a little bit with help us come up with some creative ideas. Let's, you know, take some existing assets. We kind of edited them really quickly. It was all very, I hate to say like down and dirty, right? But effective um, in the end. So thanks for being really such a great partner in all of this. And I'm glad we were able to find so much success together. Absolutely. And I think what's, what should be added to this is we actually ended up swapping out creative. You know, we, we started with two, as you all are marketing professionals, you always run an A-B test on your creative. And typically I'm wrong with what works and what doesn't and so it's like all right let's just let's just try it out and we did a stereotypical this is so nice it feels like sleeping on a cloud kind of creative and we went with something that was more funny and i believe that's you know that is that was probably against what our brand book would tell you to do you know we are more on chic luxury attainable luxury that kind of uh direction but we really went through something that, you know, I think when I would watch it, not to toot our own horn, but I would ra raise an eyebrow and be like, oh, that was clever. And I think that is, you know, if I can give some creative advice to all of you out there is that's what I would do in, a, in an ad medium like Mountain, you know, make something that's not annoying, but that somebody would look at, but, and raise their eyebrow and be like, oh, that was, that was great. That stuck out and that's going to stick with them. And then you retarget them with all the other tools down the funnel. And we're like, yeah, I saw this, this was cool. Here we go. And 
hopefully drive them down to purchase. But so yeah, I think we we AP tested and obviously the one that was a little bit funny, persevered. Yeah. yeah, and that's always I mean that's always the benefit too of. Uh, of, of being able to pivot quickly and being able to then optimize as we go. So Matt, we're gonna pass it back to you to keep talking about CTV and another benefit of using it. Yeah, don't go anywhere though. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love your feedback. Keep those seats warm because we're gonna be coming back to you for a, a, a brief conversation here in a minute. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, circle back here a little bit. The uh, you know, Sharon's experience as an agency coming on the platform uh, is is uh, one of now over, we have had over a hundred agencies that were on the mountain platform last year, all kind of ha having their own unique stories, but uh, with a lot of things in common about the need to drive performance and better results and better client service and growth. So um, it, it's been exciting to get to know some of those stories the way we have here today with with SLT and with um, with Yasa, uh, I, I want to before we get into Q and A. And and by the way, for the audience, if you've got your questions, now's a good time to be firing it into the chat channel because we are going to be here very shortly transitioning to your questions. Uh, but I want to finish up my part of this uh, by talking about a, a, a not so obvious benefit of connected TV, and that is its halo effect on other channels. Using first party data that Mountain has access to through the platform, we were able to analyze the impact of running connected TV alongside other channels. And what we've seen is the growth you can observe here on this slide uh, about its impact on session duration uh, for both paid search and social and conversion rate changes as a result of layering in connected TV. And you can see it's substantial. Running connected TV alongside these other channels does a lot for those other channels. And I think it makes sense. Not only does connected TV done right through a platform like Mountain harvest demand, it creates demand that other channels can harvest as well. And so when you're thinking about the overall impact and benefit of running connected TV, it's useful to think about it truly uh, not just for it in, in its own right, but what it might do to the other things which you've invested so heavily in already. So uh, I want to uh, get back into conversation and um, I wanted to start by asking um, each of you a, a version of the same question. I'm gonna start sharing with you. Um, I would love to, to hear from you. And I think a lot of people in the audience who might be new to Connected TV would love to hear from you. Uh, if you had the benefit of time travel and could go back to the very early stages of when you were contemplating uh, connected TV, uh, what would the 2023 version of, of yourself tell the, say the, you know, the, the, the one in, in, in the past about what would you do differently? What have you learned? What advice would you give? I love these questions, right? Cause it's always like, wow, I'm so much wiser now. Um, I think I would have told myself not to, not to worry so much about the, the, the setup of it. And what I mean by this is I think when, before we started running ads on CTV, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make sure that the creative was television quality, right? So um, coming from traditional ad background, it was just kind of like had to be perfect. The production had to be perfect. The um, everything had to be kind of done and baked and polished. And as you just heard from Johannes, it was like, no, let's just A-B test or let's just, you know, let's take a, a little bit from here, a little bit from there and splice things together. So I think that's one thing of um, what, what's that saying? Like rather than perfect, just get it done or something like that. It's kind of um, I've completely forgot the, the saying, but if I could go back, I would tell myself, like, just launch it, just launch it and give it about a week. And at the end of that week, um, we'd be able to to continue to adjust. I think there was something, there was just kind of got a misconception, I think across every, like all of us that hadn't tried it yet, that we had to be fully ready to launch this big campaign into this big new channel. Um, and now we've just learned. It's just, you know, it's just as easy as like pressing submit on Google or on Meta, like, and then you can pause and and restart again if you need to. I think, by the way, Sharon, your experience is not unique. Uh, and and in part because we're all, first of all, consumers at the end of the day. We all see these same ads. We have the same experience, you know, in our living rooms, our family rooms, watching television. And it's very easy 
when that ex viewing experience feels so familiar as it has over the last seven or eight decades, mm -hmm. uh, through whether it's traditional linear TV, cable TV, whatever it is now streaming, the ad experience is remarkably stable. How it comes to life is very different. And what you experience through your own experimentation is, in fact, that you can be experimental in this medium. You don't have to have everything perfect. I right. think, to your point, you don't have to have it all perfect when you, you're ready to press go. It, the, the, this medium allows for flexibility, experimentation. Try something, you'll know pretty quickly whether it's working or not, and then you can right. make an adjustment, and it's not hard to do. Absolutely. Uh, Johannes, uh, let's, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question. What would the 2023 version of yourself with the benefit of time travel advise the, the, the version of yourself in the past about what works well, what to do differently? Yeah, thank you. I, I think, you know, we didn't have the time to overthink what kind of ad creative we put out there because we only had a week to put it together. So <laughs> that that burden was not on my shoulders and we, we just repurposed stuff that we already had. I guess we shot one one ad that we, that we did from scratch, but it was super low budget and we did it quickly. So the only thing that I would have liked to do differently, you know, in hindsight is I would have put it in the mix earlier. So this mm -hmm. was right after Black Friday. I feel like, for brand, creating awareness around your brand and that particular product, I would have liked to start at least at the beginning of November. Um, you know, I think that would have helped us throughout the funnel, throughout that heavy spending time with consumers to have that awareness, to put our brand out there, put the product out there. So I would have started earlier actually to put it in the mix, you know, obviously now understanding what, which role it plays. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's a useful learning. I mean, you'll tuck that away for the next time. And I think that's especially valid for anybody who, who will be advertising gift giving uh, products around the holidays that uh, the more time you can build up, uh, sometimes you can gain benefit of some pricing efficiency by starting a little bit earlier and you can build up that intent. So when the, you know, the gift giving really becomes serious, that becomes easier for people to remember your brand as that option. Exactly. So, yeah, yep. that's that's really smart. Um, before I wrap it up with a summary and we hand it over to questions again, uh, please feel free to drop your questions into the chat for for Sharon or Johannes or myself, and we'll get to as many as possible. Uh, I wanted to give each of you just one opportunity to share. How can people learn more about each of your businesses? Sharon, how can people learn more about SLT? Oh, that's so nice of you, Matt. <laughs> um, we Our website is sltconsulting.co. And uh, we've got a lot of information about what we do there, all of the services that we offer. We've got some case studies on there. So check out the website. If you'd like to book a call with us, you can click on, I think it's contact us and fill out a couple of questions and talk to a member of my team. Um, another way you can engage is on LinkedIn as well. I think Adweek actually tagged us in a couple of things for this webinar. But if you also just search for SLT Consulting, we're the only uh, boutique agency on LinkedIn. So follow us there. We, we often post things like blog posts about industry um, developments. Uh, we, we often host a lot of these webinars with other partners. So we'd love to have you guys keep track of our journey. And I'd love to hear from you if you're interested in getting to know us a little bit better. Sharon's team also produces a bang up newsletter, which I highly recommend. It's really, really oh, yeah. neat. It's got so, a lot yes. of good stuff in it. Sign up for our newsletter too. Thank yeah, you. That's right. Johannes, how can people who are interested in learning more about uh, the Yasa brand? Yeah, uh, thanks, where, where man. Yeah, uh, you can find us at yasa.com. That's with two A's uh, in the front and then one in the back. Um, we we are located, we obviously have a uh, business here in the United States, but also over in Europe. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn directly. I do help uh, businesses in Europe, B2C brands, uh, to come over to the United States, set up, uh, set up shop here. And the other way around, so U.S. companies wanting to go over in Europe because I've learned so much, you know, working both, uh, um, on both sides of the pond with e-commerce brands. So uh, connect with me if you want to have a chat about that. Um, but yeah, thank you for the opportunity to have the shout out here for Yasa. Oh, that's great. I pre really appreciate both of you sharing your story, and I know that the audience does too. So we'll wrap it up. Uh, connected TV is a very different uh, vehicle than the traditional linear television grandfather that it has because it is performance driven, because it is faster, it runs on digital plumbing and wiring. So it gives 
flexibility, speed, less waste, more efficiency, and ultimately provably better results. Uh, streaming is very quickly becoming the default way in which consumers watch TV. Um, that's why brands of, and agencies of all sizes are flocking in. The good news is that small and medium-sized businesses and agencies are able to participate because uh, access to it has been democratized and because it can be so performant uh, in addition to building great brand awareness, as you've heard from our guests. And then finally, uh, connected TV advertising does create benefits for the results you achieve in other channels, especially paid search and social. So with that, Danielle, we're going to throw it back over to you for some audience Q&A. Awesome. Thank you so much for those insights, everyone. What a fantastic discussion here today. Uh, we do have time to take a few questions. We'll get to as many as we can over the next five to 10 minutes or so. Um, to our audience members, please know that if we don't get to your question today, we always make sure they get forwarded over to our sponsor so they have the opportunity to possibly reply to you offline. First, a few other quick reminders from Adweek. Today's webinar has been recorded and will be available on demand later this afternoon. We'll email everyone a link to that recording, so keep an eye out for it. And if you would like a copy of today's slides, you can find those in the event resources area on your screen as well, so be sure to grab them. Now, let's get to some of these questions. Our first question here is for Johannes and Sharon, um, and that is, what's the best way to align all of these digital channels to complement one another? Johannes, do you want to talk about it from a brand side, and I'll talk about it in terms of how we support businesses? Yeah, sure. I so I I think the the charm of connected TV is when I when I was reflecting on it, you know, what other mediums do you have? You could go out of home, which is incredibly expensive. Not sure how you do that as a small and medium sized business like ourselves. Um, there, something that's similar is YouTube, but. When you really think about it, that doesn't do the same thing. What you have with YouTube, somebody came for a dedicated piece of content that they, in an ideal world, want to see right away. So what, they read, what they're waiting for is the skip button. However, TV has trained us to be in a mode when you actually watch a show that you then you're used to seeing commercials right after. And so the consumer or the, the person that watches that segment is actually used to, I'm okay with this ad. And I think that's the beauty of it. And for me as a small and medium-sized brand, I'm like, this is where I wanna be. You know, I'm, I'm not intrusive. People are used to this. They are gonna be okay with seeing our ad. And so that's very a very different sort of medium compared to say a YouTube. And I think it it is, playing a, an, an interesting role in prospecting and creating brand awareness. That's how I view connected TV in the full funnel spectrum. Yeah, and I think um, to, to complement that, I think when we, when we work with clients, um, we always start with the objective first, right? So I think when we think about how these channels complement each other, we think about what are the priorities for either the campaign or the business or the season, and then we prioritize the channels based on how they're gonna deliver against those goals. Um, I think what's kind of neat about this is that you can leverage CTV in the way that you would leverage digital or programmatic or any other formats, but you can almost do it in a backwards way. And I'll give you a little, a quick story because I know we're kind of almost at time, but. I was on, and this was one of those things where it was like almost too obvious. So I was on a website, it was a meal kit delivery service. I won't name the name just in case someone from that brand is on the call. Um, but I was, you know, just kind of browsing around and um, shut out of that browser tab because I didn't convert right away. And at the same time, my kids were watching, maybe it was like Disney Plus or something, but they were watching something streaming. And literally within 15 minutes, the ad for that same brand showed up in our living room. And I was like, there you go. Like, you know, it's like that moment as a marketer where you're like, yes, caught you, like got it. And so it was this moment, but it was interesting because the ad had an offer in the ad itself because they obviously were retargeting, right? Okay. Um, and they had an offer and it was like, get your first box free. You're like a very typical offer. So it didn't feel super intrusive and it felt it felt pretty organic because it was a family. I mean, my kids were watching, it was like family network kind of thing. And it was just about, you know, cooking meals for your family for the week. 
And it was one of those moments where I was like, this is exactly how it should be done. Like the consumer has exhibited some kind of a behavior to trigger interest. Now you're using an awareness, like what would have been an awareness tool traditionally, right? Television is usually known as an awareness tool, but now you're using a format to connect with someone um, in a way where they kind of, there isn't a skip button. Like it was totally right. relevant. It was completely right in my living room. And what did I do right after? I picked up my phone. So third screen and signed up for that free offer. And so that's just, I, I hope that paints a picture of that's how you can think about this in terms of complementing channels. It's really thinking about how the consumer is engaging with your brand, but also what are the right touch points and what are the right messages um, as, as they continue on with their journey. Absolutely. Super constructive example there. Thanks for that. Our next question here, I'm going to pose to both Sharon and Matt. Would love both of your thoughts on this. And that is, does CTV really drive better engagement than social? And if so, how? I can take that first. And then Matt, I want your, I want your data-driven, platform-driven answer. Um, it does because it and, it, and and I think this is where engagement, you know, we all measure engagement in different ways. But when I think about are we getting more meaningful engagement um, when we're running a CTV ad in addition to a paid social campaign or in addition to a paid search campaign? I'd say absolutely. For all the reasons that I've just mentioned, right? It's much more full funnel. It's much more holistic. Um, it's giving the consumer some time to even get to know your brand a little bit. And so Johannes's reflection of starting earlier is always a great thing because you're building up that relationship before you're asking them to do something about it, before you're asking them to put a, a, a product in the cart or to convert or to check out. Um, so in those ways, it does build more meaningful engagement. Um, what you're also getting on top of that engagement is you're getting impressions and reach and all of the great awareness metrics as well. I agree with everything Sharon just said, and we do have the data to back that up to show that ads served on Mountain uh, Drive, a level of engagement that is very comparable and better in many cases than uh, than paid social. And I and I bring it back to something that uh, Johannes reminded me of, which is the training in human behavior that these platforms have taught us over the years, that we are taught as users of paid social, which is consumed 90% on our on our smartphones. We've been trained to just, if we don't like something, it's a, it's, a, it's a thumb flip away from being moving on from it. And so these ads are very easy to avoid. Uh, but with television, we are trained to sit back and know that an ad break is gonna be finite and with the benefit of 15 or 30 seconds of ad time, uh, with the kind of creative approach that Johannes recommended earlier, you have an opportunity to entertain your audience in a way that they're ready to accept. And so for all of those reasons, I think you see the kind of results that, uh, that, that certainly Johannes and Sharon have talked about and that I alluded to earlier. Uh, I think it's notable that TV has this impact on not only driving great results in its own right, but also in improving the performance of these other channels because so much intent is created in TV that then these other channels are, are uh, able to harvest uh, as well. So I think a lot of it comes back to human behavior. Totally, it makes perfect sense. Thank you both for that. Our next question here is for Matt, and it's from Brenda. She asks, do you think that the platform is more useful for B2C or B2B audiences or both? Brenda, thank you for that question, and we get it a lot. Um, so I'll answer this by saying, first of all, Mountain, in, in, in its operation, when we market Mountain, we are in full B2B mode. Uh, we advertise Mountain to advertisers and agencies uh, to, to come and, and get to know more about the platform. We run ads on the Mountain platform to do this, and we target B2B audiences on our platform. The results are that on average, month to month, 25% of our website traffic comes from Mountain ads that we run on the Mountain platform. So I can think of no better testimonial about the platform's ability to uh, satisfy the needs of a B2B marketer than to say, we use it for our own B2B marketing. We found it to be very, very effective. We have lots and lots of B2B advertisers who are using it as well. I think that the, the precision of the platform now enables advertisers to more confidently reach a B2B audience 
than might have been possible on linear television. When we think about talking heads programming on Sunday mornings, where you see a lot more B2B advertising, a lot of that we know is going to go to people who just aren't in market because the audience precision just isn't there. So uh, it is, it is, it can be equally as effective for both B2C and B2B audiences. Thanks for that. And sort of a follow-up question to that, you know, earlier in the discussion, the topic of budget came up and I can totally imagine that um, more than one person on this call has that question in their mind, right? Like what's appropriate. But the question here is if you had to pitch this to a new client with a small budget, what would be the main selling points? In other words, you know, what are the main benefits here for folks who may be coming in uh, with smaller budgets? Sharon, you want to take that one? Yeah, I think the theme of our of our um, session today has been small but mighty, and I think you know that that I, taking that theme, the the angle would be that with a with a small budget you can make a very big splash when you are running um, on on mountain and using connected TV. It is uh, it it's something where I think Johannes actually threw out some numbers earlier. It's something where really with just ten thousand dollar budget, which isn't a ton. It's very feasible for a lot of smaller and medium-sized businesses. You can really make an impact. You can um, you can drive brand awareness. You can drive conversions. You can get ROAS um, and and make those improvements. And and um, it's it's kind of an easy sell when you look at it from that perspective. Certainly. Thank you for that. And switching gears a little bit here to talk about creative. So we have a question here. Um, they say, Johannes uh, talked about A-B testing a classic, quote unquote, luxury creative versus a humorous or clever creative. How do you structure the perfect A-B test for CTV? Um, they follow up asking number of assets, tonality, originally produced content versus old assets, how long to test, etc. Pretty detailed question. I appreciate the detailed nature of that question, but any guidance you can provide there well I, I discussed it i think so for us we just went back to something we already had because of the lack of time um as far as structuring the a b test goes i think sharon and matt are the, the experts and they've seen more than just one brand in terms of you know how to set up good experiments um but for us it was really just two videos i believe they were both 30 seconds long and that was it. So that was our A-B test with one clear winner being the humorous one. Yeah, I can give you kind of our um, our general template for how we do things. But Matt, I want to hear if there's best practices on Mountain that maybe even I can learn from you now. Um, but typically we have at least two versions when it comes to an A-B test. Um, sometimes it's actually even more if it's as long as we're testing the same thing, right? So if it's the call to action, it could be maybe three or four versions even, but at least two versions. We're running it for at least two weeks, two full weeks before we truly make a decision on if something won versus if it didn't. Um, and then in terms of the KPIs we're looking at, that that varies uh, depending on the campaign type, depending on the budget levels, and depending on sort of the campaign objectives. So that's a little broader, but I would say for us, it's usually two weeks at the very minimum, and then definitely two pieces of creative, and sometimes more as long as the thing you're testing is is just the one thing you're changing. Yeah, Sharon, you hit on this, certainly one of the things that we recommend for mountain advertisers, which is give it enough time so that you can get a read on it. Don't don't call it after 24 or 48 hours of running. You want to really give it enough time to build up and to be able to to, to draw some meaningful conclusions. I think another thing to keep in mind, and this is just sort of a general best practice, is the creative approach. You want to be able to define or, or, or hopefully build institutional knowledge about what is it about the creative that separated uh, separated one ad from another. You know, I'll, I'll give an example. A, a year or so ago, uh, we ran for Mountain to advertise Mountain. We built two versions of essentially the same ad featuring our chief creative officer, the actor Ryan Reynolds. And uh, in in one ad, we show him on camera. Uh, speaking a script and another one, he was off camera, but saying the same lines. And our assumption was that seeing Ryan Reynolds and hearing his voice would outperform the uh, the disembodied voice of Ryan Reynolds. And uh, I, like Johannes, get all of these wrong. Uh, in fact, it was the opposite. The, uh, the, the ad where you couldn't see him, but you could hear him 
uh, outperformed the one where you could see him and hear him. And and in that case, we, we only changed one creative lever, and that was, can you see Ryan Reynolds or can you not see Ryan Reynolds? Everything else was the same. So having an idea, if you're really thinking about A-B testing, not just for building a single cam better campaign outcome, but building better creative, durable institutional knowledge, it helps to start to bank these things, these ideas and notions of what performs better for our brand and what doesn't. And to do that well helps to just always have a, a, a mindset towards experimentation and running these tests and to try to control for as few creative uh, variations as possible when you test. So well said on all fronts. Thank you all so much for sharing your insights on that one. You can really get a good picture of how um, testing can come together there. Uh, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for questions today. I'd like to thank our speakers as well as our sponsor, Mountain. Some final reminders here from Adweek. Make sure you download the slides from the event resources area beneath the video window on your screen and check your email for a link to the on-demand recording, which will be available later today. As always, if you enjoyed today's webinar, be sure to check out the Adweek webinars calendar at adweek.com slash webinars so you can see all of our upcoming events. Again, huge thank you to our speakers. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And as always, we look forward to seeing everyone at an upcoming Adweek webinar. Thanks all. Thanks everybody.